In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a high quality production ready couch in Blender that's fit for ArcViz or just selling online to make a few bucks during COVID-19. So couches used to be really difficult to create in Blender because you just had to be really good at sculpting. Uh, but thanks to cloth pressure simulation, as well as the new cloth brushes, it is now significantly easier. So in this part, we'll be starting with the basic couch frame modeling from Blueprints. Part two, we'll use the cloth simulator to make the basic cushion shape. Part three, we'll use the cloth brush to add in extra detail. Part four is variations, and then the rest is texturing, detailed seams, and finally rendering. So let's get started. First step, of course, is to figure out what sort of couch you wanna make. Now, if you were to just uh, bing couch, it's not as bad as you think. It's clearly not as good as Google Images, but at least they don't have your data. It's Microsoft. So I'm giving them a chance, you know. If you were to Bing couch and just click on like a random couch and go like, oh, this is the one I'm gonna make. <clears throat> That's all well and good until you need more reference later on. Um, like the back of the couch, what does that look like? Well, you don't know because it doesn't have a name, it's just, couch um so it's for that reason that i always recommend whenever you can uh start with something that you can find more images of it later which basically means start in our case with a brand name couch and why not go with a fancy brand um is it fancy it's evidently they make like iconic couches which have been celebrated by men with beards and too much money, but uh, anyways, we're gonna be making the Zanotti William couch, um, which besides looking nice, um, because it is a designer couch, uh, they also give you the blueprints, um, high res reference photos, etc. Um, so they give it to you in weird files, so I've converted them all into something that you can download. So download the zip file in the description, and that'll give you um, everything. So now in Blender, we're gonna delete everything and we're gonna load in the blueprint so we can start modeling the couch. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, then go Image, Reference, and then find wherever it is you've unzipped your zip file, the PNG blueprint, and load that in. And you can see we've now got an image which is rotated arbitrarily. Um, evidently it's to match whatever angle you were at previously, but we can clear that by hitting Alt R. Now let's get a good look at this thing. Um, you can see it looks like there's three of them, but it's just the different angles. So uh, we're looking top down now. So we might as well start with this one right here. So we wanna model the basic shape of the couch. Um, so we're gonna add in a cube. Um, the second one's always better than the first one. So um, with the image here selected, uh, I, it's a little too bright, right? It's a little too, uh, little too white and that is definitely not cool. So I'm gonna go now into wireframe with my cube here. And uh, yeah, we can start scaling this to, uh, to match it. Now you will see in our blueprint, um, besides giving you the dimensions, it's also giving you the actual measurements, uh, which is very handy. So at least one of the measurements, but that's all you need. So with my cube here selected, if I hit N, N for Nelly, and then underneath our item, you'll find a dimension there, right? So uh, we just want it to match that. So 224, 224 centimeters. This is basic. It's not the most thrilling stuff, but <laughs> but we got to do it. Um, so now that I've got that, um, I know that uh, this is the correct width of the couch, and it means that my reference image needs to be scaled down. So scale up the blueprint now, scale it down, whatever, until it matches. It's a little bit fiddly, but at least you only have to do it once. Hopefully, if you do it properly the first time. Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. So, um, well done. We've got one box checked. So looking top down, we've got the dimensions right. Let's scale this back a little bit. Um, yeah, something like that. Now this is actually gonna be uh, the bottom slab of our couch there, right? So if we look front on, uh, we now need to duplicate our reference and then rotate it along the X axis to 90 degrees, holding down control, right? You can see top left-hand corner, it's uh, snapping it to five degree increments, very handy. If you haven't watched my chair tutorial, by the way, um, it goes over a lot of this stuff that we're doing now, which is kind of boring, but you know, 
It's handy if you want to learn how to model anything in the future, which you might want to do. So with the QP selected now, I can scale this down. And look at that, we have the bottom slab of the couch. Um, lovely. Now we also have another view of our reference, uh, of our blueprint, which is uh, the side view. So duplicate it one last time, rotate this 90 degrees and yeah, there we go. That's where it's supposed to go. And then I just position this like so. And there we have it. Ha ha, thrilling. Now we can add a bevel and everything. We'll probably do that later. Um, for now, we just want to finish modeling the rest of the couch. So it's got this kind of like flat board. Uh, it's probably easy to look at from here. It's got like a flat board thing that sort of stretches around it. So might as well model that next. So duplicate this, scale this in. And this is gonna be exactly that. So it starts about here. This is, you know, unfortunately, what you have to start the tutorial series with, which is the most boring part. Um, I promise you the rest is more fun. I was thinking of just like speeding this part up, but then I thought, you know, some of you guys, some of you guys always want the slow version. So I figured, ah, you know, if you know how to model a couch, you can just do it and uh, you can skip ahead, but anyways. Uh, so I've only modeled half of it because I wanna use the mirror modifier, which is just gonna be handy. And now that I've got that, I can select my mirror object and make it the slab. And now we have an exact mirror, both sides. And then when we turn on clipping and smash it together, and then we have one little face in the middle there, which we do not want, so delete that face. Ta-da, thrilling. Now the final thing we're gonna model, at least in this part, is uh, this second second slab, uh, this thing here, right? Uh, which looks like a slab, but it's actually like a cushion, like it's a giant, uh, giant cushion, I assume. I haven't sat on one of these couches, but I assume that is this the same cushion as what's up there, so it's padding. Anyways, point is, we can just duplicate this. So move this up. And uh, you would think that that's, that's what you would do, but actually it's sort of, it's just this little bit here that sticks out and then this arm sort of stops there. So actually this was supposed to go down and then this part is supposed to end here. Oh, and look at that. I, yeah, I really half-assed the modeling. Um, <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so this part here, now I can select this face. By the way, uh, I'm switching between vertice mode um, and face select mode by hitting one and three, um, or you can click these little buttons up here. If you don't have my keyboard shortcut, uh, you should definitely get that. It's link is in the description. You just have to join my newsletter list and then you get a little PDF with all the shortcuts and you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, I don't know, anything ever again. Um, okay, so add a little loop cut there. And then I'll just extrude this little bit out there. Um, and eh, I don't wanna have to do the same on the other side. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. Add a mirror modifier, select that object. Ah, gotta go into solid view mode. Then we can actually click the right object, which is the cube. And there we go. Um, oh, it, actually the origin was in the right place anyway. Okay, so clipping, smash it together, delete those faces. And there we have it. And actually, if you wanted to be like precise, what you would do is like with this face here selected, if you wanted it to perfectly line up with this face here, rather than going like, oh, is it like perfectly aligned? What you can do is a little tip is uh, if you change, so this snap, this thing here by default, like it's when you hold down control, it'll move it in like five increments or whatever, um, which isn't handy, but you can change this to face, which means when you hit G and you're moving something, if you then hit X, you're moving it just along the X axis. But then if you hold down control, um, you can see that it'll it'll snap it to the nearest face, which in this case is uh, this one right here. And you can see that that should now be exactly perfectly aligned. And I'll do the exact same thing here. G, X, hold down control. And now those are perfectly aligned. And then I'll move this back. Shouldn't be coming out the back there. Yeah, that's good. And then I'll just select these two move this back, hold down control, and there you go. So that should now be perfectly uh, aligned. Um, now we'll add a bevel and everything later on. That'll come in later parts, but uh, for now, this, this'll be fine. 
And then the final, final, final thing we'll do, at least in this part, is adding in these little steel chrome fancy boy legs. So it's just gonna be a cube. So let's just add in a cube, scale this in like so. And it looks like it's rotated at 45 degrees. So um, yeah, I'll show you a little tip. So let's just take this, this cube here, drag this out along the X axis, right? Get the basic shape of it, right about there. Okay. And it's, yeah, it's like a 90 degree, right? So we just drag that, drag this, extrude this down like so. Cool. Oh, can you see the shortcuts I'm pressing? Okay, you can. Yeah, down there. Sometimes when it's too white, you won't be able to see it, but you'll just have to deal with that. Um, okay, so we've got, yeah, we've got a little angle. Um, we could add in a subsurf modifier, whatever, if we wanted to. Actually, I think we'll just use a bevel modifier. It's like the least important thing, <laughs> this couch. Like if, if the legs are the only thing that's wrong on your couch, you've, you've done a good job, trust me. Couches are, yeah, they're, they're finicky. They're, they're hard to get right, but that's why I made this tutorial because I think there's, uh, I've certainly made enough terrible couches to fill um, a soup kitchen. I don't know, uh, but anyways, so I wanna, make a, I wanna make a tutorial that shows how to do it well. Anyways, so if I rotate this now by 45 degrees, holding down control, top left-hand corner, minus 45 degrees, that's there. Now, when you do that, of course, you can see that this perspective is now off. Like it's no longer gonna match the blueprint. And then if you were to like come in here and go like, oh, if I take this little piece and I sort of move this out, but then it's like not a flush 45 degree angle. Well, if you followed my little uh, chair tutorial, you'd already know this trick. But um, yes, if you were to move this along like, along like an X axis, that's X, which is like going this way, right? Which is not what you want. However, if you were to hit G, and then X, and then X again, it's now moving it local to the rotation of this object, which means that that is now, uh, by tapping X twice, I'm now moving this along and I can get this to line up exactly with the blueprint and that's still flush, right? So it's, it's basically when you're tapping G twice, it's like it's using the local transform orientation or it's basically, it's taking this rotation here so that, um, yeah, I, I hope it's clear, right? It just means that, yeah. Anyways, it's really handy. I'm, I'm glad someone reminded me of the double tap thing when I was doing the chair tutorial um, because previous to that, I was always like changing this to local and then doing it and it was, yeah, it was too finicky, but thankfully there's a, there's a way around that. So that's cool. Um, and then I guess this edge there is probably a little bit higher up, at least according to the blueprint, but that's good. Now, uh, rather than duplicate this and position it, if you could uh, just do this one little thing, could you please mirror modifier right there and then hit Y as well as X and you can see it's got it around all the corners. And look at that, we have our couch ready to go. So of course, save this whilst you can. And then we will move on to the next part, which is finally where we're gonna to get to the fun stuff, which is uh, making this seat cushion and then using the cloth simulator to make it puff up and have a lot of fun with that. So click here and I will see you in that video.